Okay, we are recording. So where do we leave off? <laughs> oh yeah, so it's just Bobby saying, not being, not yeah. understanding what it's like to be part of a team. Yeah, yeah. So just <laughs> learning from him uh, and just uh, having someone say, hey, you don't have to do this alone. Because even in my 30 year marriage, it, I was pretty much, you know, an independent. On her own. On her, you know, it just, we weren't very close. And, you know, we were staying together for the kids and that type of thing. And so, right. so I had to learn how to, open up and be vulnerable and i'm still learning that um that i need somebody i need help or i need this it's very hard for me to ask for help and to tell somebody that i need something i'm just so used to you know being a tough fast woman and doing it on my own <laughs> <laughs> yeah what a what a transition i know like there's pride in that too you know yeah, yeah. i can do it alone a lot so, that's what so makes it so hard is to let go of that pride mm -hmm. you know? so what helped you to to let go of this what 30 year relationship on compiled yeah. on top of your your background and your childhood and then find healing and have this new relationship that you're you know you've been in now that is no longer new but where yeah. it's like not it's actually healthy <laughs> well a couple things i think i just be, started becoming aware and reading um i took my yoga training and that really opened me up to listening more to my inside voice and um knowing that i realizing that i just you know every time i would try and express myself in this relationship i was in or step outside the box a little bit there was a lot of fear put around that and, um, you know, so it was just like, I just realized that I was never going to be able to live fully my life. But also then at the same time, I, uh, had a friend, um, who she was actually the reason I got into fitness because I was in her workout videos a long time ago. And, um, her husband was dying of cancer and I would read her at the time that was called caring uh, bridge I think still there yeah it's still there anyway I would read her blog and it was like a love letter and it started back from when she first met her husband and you know oh all of, and it was just like the most beautiful story and I would just lose myself in it and I would say I want that you know and so I think that really got planted in my heart um, and I started envisioning that, um, because I was just so miserable in my, my relationship. And so I spent a lot of time on my own, just kind of dreaming about how my life would be after I got out of this relationship and, mm -hmm. and just finding that love. And so I think that I, in not knowing I created this and so you know, as much as I believe in this. So you created this? Well, I hope. <laughs> I, mean, I was going to say, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't all me, but you know. <laughs> no, I'll give you credit. But anyway, so, um, I mean, I believe in the sanctity of marriage and everything, but it was, it was obvious the last 10 years it wasn't going to work out, but we kept trying. Wow, 10 years. That's a long time to keep trying. It was 30 years. It was 10 years, really, I can say I was unhappy. Man, I can't even imagine. Yeah, Whew. yeah. But you know, when you have your your family, and then I had that fear uh, keeping me there um, from being in a divorced family and not wanting to, you know, just my belief about marriage too. I mean, I really believed that everything was going to get better. I really did. Mm -hmm. And I would pray and just, you know, but it's, I don't know. It was yeah. Both. It just wasn't meant to be, I guess. So it's yeah. still um, hard to reconcile and come to terms with, but you mm. know, it may take me the rest of my life. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for being honest and open about that because you know, so many times we feel like these people who are coming forward, like they're they've been through it, but it's not always that easy. You know, yeah. it's just a little bit each day. Yeah, um, and what other way is there to be but honest? You know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I, one other part of, of both of you guys and your stories are that you had something like a, this new goal and it just so happened to be fitness and you guys are doing this phenomenal job. My baby's crying. Can you hear in the background? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if you can get it real quick. I'm going to pause this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. Zoom. Okay. Yeah. So, so I was asking about the swimming and the fitness. You kind of like went through this entire process of, you know, pain and anger and 
working on healing and then you know you found swimming dean and you found uh, fitness and figure events bobby so can you tell me more about what that was like for you guys and how that's helped you with the process well uh i knew it uh, Oh, that's that's an angry cry. <laughs> she heard her son. Okay, let me try this one more time. <laughs> okay, I just kept recording, so I'll just cut that out later. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you guys again for your patience. I guess you've been oh, there. No worries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Little babies come first. Always. <laughs> well, they kind of demand it. <laughs> yeah, we'll you want them to or not? <laughs> yeah. So you guys were talking about. Yeah. Um, I knew for me that I was dying in August of 2013 and I, my daughter was 21 and she just lost her mama a couple years before and I knew that if she lost me it was not going to be good for her and so I knew I had to do something and as a therapist uh, I'd read Viktor Frankl's book, uh, the, what's the name of it now, I just forgot. Oh, yeah. um, Man's Search for Meaning? Man's or? Search for Meaning, thank you. I just finished and, uh, <laughs> I'd used that so many times in therapy, just if I could help people find a purpose, that they'd come back to life or uh, overcome depression or anxiety, that purpose is one of the most powerful tools you could have. And I knew I needed something that was extremely powerful, but I didn't care about anything anymore. And so I found an old journal that I'd been forced to keep when I was 12 in sixth grade. And I thought, I wonder what the 12-year-old the Dean thought. And so I started looking through it and it said, when I become an adult, there are two things I have to do. I have to climb Mount Everest and swim the English Channel. Well, I knew I couldn't climb Everest, but when I saw the English Channel, I just got really excited. And I hadn't been swimming for years. But I thought, no, that sounds great. And, and uh, so I started really thinking about it. And, and the more I thought about it, the more excited I became. It was the only thing that made sense to me. So I told my doctors that I was going to swim the English Channel. And they freaked out. They're like, <laughs> are you crazy? You get your immune system so bad. Because I was down to 159 pounds. I had these huge, my lymph nodes had swollen up so much I could hardly turn my neck. And I had under my right armpit what my doctor lovingly called my hockey puck because it was about the size and thickness of a hockey puck. I couldn't really put my right arm down. And he's like, you get in a public pool, it could kill you. And I looked at him and I said, well, what do you want me to do? Die watching Wheel of Fortune, you know, sitting on a couch? I'm not going to do that. And so looking back now, without really realizing it, I gambled my life on swimming. And I got in the pool, and the first time I did, it took me over an hour to swim 11 laps. 
And I'm, I was pretty sure little girls in water wings were passing me, <laughs> but uh, it didn't matter. I felt good and it felt like me. And even when I'd be hanging on the pool deck, breathing like uh, some 500 pounder or something, I, uh, I, I, I was smiling because it, something was moving. It, I was doing something. And, and so uh, I thought, boy, that's what I got to do. And so I just started uh, swimming and swimming and all of my numbers started going in the right direction. And I started putting on muscle again. And uh, finally my head started to clear. And uh, Bobby and my daughter make fun of me when I say this, but uh, the thought actually occurred to me, who cares if a middle-aged old man puts on a Speedo and swims to France. It does the world no good. <laughs> and this was in November because my head had finally cleared. And I thought, okay, what would do the world more good? And so I started praying and asking, what would do the world more good? How could I do this same thing, but do more good? And I found out that uh, the river I'd only been born four blocks from, the Willamette, it's the longest it's kind of Mama River to Oregon. It goes, uh, comes out of the mountains, uh, cuts through our state, goes through our state capital, goes through our, our biggest town, Portland, and then out into the Columbia River. And uh, I found out no one had ever swum the entire length. And it's 187 miles long. And so that's what I decided to do. And so in, uh, in June of 2014, when I was 54, I swam for 22 days in 40 degree water and uh, became the first and still the only person who swam the entire length of the Willamette River. And just that, having that focus and that goal, and I partnered with the Leukemia Lymphoma Society to raise money and awareness for leukemia and lymphoma and uh, try to show other cancer patients you don't have to give up your dreams just because you've gotten a diagnosis. The cool thing, the hardest thing about that whole swim was I was in constant hypothermia. Even with the three mil wetsuit, I'd have to get out about every 30 minutes and two jumping jacks after 30 minutes of swimming. Uh, just to warm up because I was going into what was called deep core throttle where you get so hypothermic your insides start to violently shake way beyond shivering and that's a real bad sign so anytime I go start going into deep core throttle I get out of the river and do jumping jacks or run in place and drink hot tea until those subsided a little bit and then I'd get back in and do it again and I do that for about eight to ten hours a day um, I knew it was going to be cold. I knew it was going to be hard, but come to find out, and here's the coolest part of that whole story. Uh, I thought I was just kind of swinging for the fence that this might be my last thing I ever do on earth. And it would leave my daughter with a legacy that I didn't just die on a couch. Uh, little did I know that when you're hypothermic, it boosts your immune system like crazy and gets super fuels the mitochondria. And the first blood test I took after my swim, leukemia was gone. And my doctor uh, is one of the world's top uh, oncologists and researchers in lymphoma and leukemia. And he said he'd never seen that happen. And if he hadn't diagnosed me himself, he would have thought I'd been misdiagnosed because the type of leukemia that I had is not supposed to ever go away, but it's gone. Oh. And so I just am a real believer that if you follow your dreams, your dreams are your instinct implanted inside of you like a goose to fly south for the winter. Your dreams are not my dreams. My dreams aren't Bobby's dreams. We all have a dream. And if we follow that dream, that's when miracles happen. And that's why my profile name is Swimming in Miracles. It really has very little to do with swimming. And mostly that when we follow our purpose and start looking for miracles, 
miracles are all around us so much so that we're swimming in them. Yeah. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, the leukemia was a big deal, but bigger yet was uh, a girl like her falling in love with a guy like me. So <laughs> that's the big miracle. That's the real proof right there. Oh, that's too sweet. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. I mean, I, I had a few questions. I mean, sure. one was just, you know, did you ever feel like giving up when you were swimming? And then, you know, did it ever feel like the odds were so against you that you know, it almost felt like all, you needed to shift directions? Like, did you ever have to shift directions? Like, what was that process like? Because you yeah. go from 11 laps to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, just swimming like, almost 12 hours a day. Yeah, I, I averaged 10 to 12 miles a day. Um, yeah, uh, I knew it was going to be hard. I knew it was going to be cold. I knew it was going to be so long. I might even end up swimming injured. And so, uh, I would visualize those things happening every night, uh, before I go to bed, I'd imagine it being cold. I'd imagine me wanting to give up. I'd imagine even like having to swim one armed or something and not giving up. Um, I, I knew that this might be my last thing I get to do on earth. I was going to finish it. And so it, it was kind of a form of combining radical acceptance with visualization. I would just see those things happen and I would accept it. And so when they actually did happen, um, the fun thing, another miracle about this story is my dad was 79 at the time and he's been just such a wild adventurer and he's really good at planning uh, long expeditions, you know, out in the mountains or different things. And so he helped me plan this entire thing and he got into it so much that when he found out that I'd need a kayaker in front of me the whole way, he wanted to do that. And uh -huh. so at 79, uh, my dad kayaked the whole 187 miles in front of me, and and we had this beautiful, just almost rite of passage, and we got so close, and so many things happened between us. It was just a fantastic gift, but uh, he said that was the thing that amazed him most is it would be so cold and sometimes just pouring down sheets of rain. And he'd say, okay, time to get back in, because he'd always give me 10 minutes on a break. <laughs> and it was kind of a taskmaster. And he cracked the whip, and he said, I'd, I'd never hesitate. I'd just get back in and start swimming. And he told my sister, we took every Sunday off. And so he and my mom would go back home. And they, took ten, they saw my sister right when we were in the middle of it. And I guess he broke down in tears and said he couldn't believe uh, that I was able to do that. But uh, I think, though, we're also given what we need to accomplish our dreams. And I've always been extremely stubborn. <laughs> I was the kid that would sit at the meal uh, at the dinner table for four hours because I refused to finish my peas, you know, and until my parents would finally be like, okay, forget it. Um, and that used to be a detriment and something that the people who loved me had to put up with was how stubborn I was. But in a situation like that, that's what it takes. You have to be extremely stubborn to never give up. Or I think that's why a lot of people haven't done those ultra, ultra, marathons is because it's so easy to make an excuse when things aren't fun and no one's looking and it's hard and you're two weeks into it and it's not exciting anymore. But uh, at our um, big celebration dinner afterwards, one of the coolest things my dad said is, well, we didn't know when Dean would finish but all of us that know him knew he would or die trauma. <laughs> so yeah. that's a grit. Yeah. Yeah. That's incredible. Wow. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Just 
taking it in. <laughs> <laughs> but I've worked with I've worked with many since that when I have them combine the visualization with radical acceptance, it really puts them in a sweet spot for accomplishing things. I just um, ran across the guy uh, who started Patagonia, Yvonne Kennard. He said, it, it isn't adventure until something goes wrong. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's perfect. Uh, if everything goes right, it's just kind of boring. Adventure happens when things go wrong and you have to struggle past. Right. And so if you, you don't make the mistake of thinking that it's all going to be easy and nothing's ever going to go wrong, as a matter of fact, if you plan for that and even practice overcoming those things in your mind, then it's not such a shock. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love that you, you say a sentence with it because I think something that I've always gravitated to is um, the whoop method. So, so whenever I'm, I'm planning out things, I think about, okay, what are the obstacles and how can I get through them? But um, essentially my brain goes into how do I get through it mode? And I almost feel like it would just be like an ease to just be like, how can I just accept it? Mm -hmm. you know, instead of always thinking, you got to do this and that and this, just being like, ride that wave out, literally. <laughs> yeah. I just try and look at it like childbirth, right? I mean, we're always <laughs> expanding and contracting. Yeah. And that's how we come into this world, you know? And so we're right. going to have times where we're contracting. And if we can just settle into it and relax, just like anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're going to have times of expansion again, too. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's great. So, so Bobby, what was it like for you? Because, you know, here you are coming into your own and becoming this woman who is independent and you're just, you're living your life and you're finding something that's for you. And, and you were a little bit older because something that I, I really love about your, your brand and what you preach is, you know, there's no set age. And that's so true. So many people do limit themselves because of their age. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I love your message. And um, I'm really interesting to hear because, you know, part of your journey was visualizing, you know, what you have now and so much, so badly you wanted to be loved. But at first you kind of had to learn to you know, love yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah, totally. I think that, you know, you, you know, that's a journey in itself. I think probably for all of us, you know, learning, especially for women, maybe more so than men, I'm not sure, but uh, just learning to uh, really, um, you know, accept ourselves, um, our bodies, our minds, um, you know, I think that's huge. So I have, um, you know, I think that it gets easier as you get older too, um, mm -hmm. that you kind of just get tired of, <laughs> you know, hey, you know, I'm fine the way I am. You know, you get tired of laying that uh, mantle of perfection or, you know, expecting that of yourself in all ways and so it's just i think with age that kind of stuff just kind of sheds away a little easier and so um and also you know getting older it's a time and women going through menopause and change in life you know it's a time we're really reflecting and looking back and you know knowing that ahead of us there's not a lot more time left and so i think it's a time when women really or people just hunker down too and say hey what what is it I really want to do with my life? And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's, I remember I, I read a book by um, Dr. Northrup um, when I was going through menopause and she said that, she said, watch out, you're going to really question things now. And you know, what you were happy with and settled with at one time, you don't anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really think everyone uh, needs to realize how brief life is. Mm -hmm. It's just an instant. One of my favorite quotes is by Leonard Bernstein. He said, to achieve anything great, you only need two things, a plan and not quite enough time. <laughs> and the problem is most people have a plan, but they don't realize we don't really have enough time. I think for me, even though it was a tragic event, uh, the blessing or the gift in going through what I've gone through, having almost died several times and then watching my first wife die, is I realized how short life can be and how quickly it can be over and then that's it. 
And so I don't ever want to wait. I just, I'm going to do it now, even though I may not feel like I'm ready or have enough time or experience or money or whatever. All those things will be figured out. I'm going to go for it now because I may not have tomorrow. Well, I think that's true. So many of us are like, well, we'll do this when this gets perfect, mm -hmm. you know, but it never will. And, right. you know, and so I think I've learned that from our, you know, even being in our mastermind too. It's like, just lay it out and go for it and figure it out as you go. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Yeah, we went, we went over to Ireland and I became the first person to swim the entire length of the longest river in the British Isles, the River Shannon. And it was crazy. <laughs> it made the Willamette River look like a kindergarten cakewalk. It, <laughs> it was so hard. But it was something I'd been wanting to do. And even though Bobby and I just gotten married, it, it didn't seem like the right time at all. But uh, I knew we didn't have an unlimited number of days. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how long I had or if I'd ever get the chance to do it again. And so we went and did it. And, and wow, you know, we didn't, like there was a point there where it was like, this, this is not gonna work, it's impossible. And then all of a sudden, within a couple of days, we had uh, people helping us from all over. One lady organizing the boats for him, you know, his safety boats. People to take just him jumped in. People just jumped in and that's, you know, testimony to the Irish people too. They're so yeah. hospitable. <laughs> But, you know, we, if it wasn't for that, he wouldn't have been able to do it. No. And, yeah, and so. if you just don't quick, things like that many times yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. And I love how you were supportive because I, I feel like some women in that situation would be like, what? You know, we just got married. I want yeah. time together. Yeah. So it just goes to show you guys. You know, well, that was like together. one thing I think that we both, uh, when we met, we just were at that point where we're, we're, we're a believer in following your dreams that, you know, it's put in your heart for a reason. And I think we both, we shared that. And so she's being really humble. Not <laughs> well, only was true. she it's supportive <laughs> before, well, mine too. <laughs> but when we were there, the first two days were so awful because, you know, I'd never been to Ireland. I'd never seen this river. And as much as I studied it on the internet, there were things I didn't know. Like, uh, for example, the first day I had to swim through this 11 mile long lake that was up in the mountains. And I didn't know that about three to four people die in it every year because the winds come in from the mountains and swirl the water like a toilet bowl and pull everybody even commute to the center. And then I also didn't know that the riverbed was made of flint and shale and then when it cracks off, it creates razor sharp edges. So the first day I ended up swimming 13 hours oh, yeah. and I imagined 11 uh, miles would take me about six hours mm -hmm. and we couldn't get a hold of Bobby. So I knew she was probably scared and I was bleeding everywhere and I was exhausted. And after a couple of days of that, I thought, oh my gosh, I didn't get sponsors uh, because we threw it together so quickly. So I knew it was gonna take me 10 or $12,000 from my savings. And I thought, I just spent $10,000 showing my new wife and my uh, daughter who's emerging into adulthood what a big failure I am. And uh, how to fail. He used the F word. Yeah, I almost did <laughs> this time too. I cleaned it up. Um, and uh, and on the second day, I was melting down so much. We got in our rental car because I didn't want to hear. I didn't want my daughter to hear this, and I'm just pouring it out. And after a while, Bobby's just taking it in, taking it in, taking it in. And then she looks at me and she's like, "Oh my gosh!" And I'm like, "What?" And she said. I wish we could have gotten those documentary filmmakers. <laughs> this would have been perfect. That's so much good drama. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, it's like it's not an adventure till something goes wrong. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And she just she just hugged me and she mm. said, "Don't worry. We'll figure it out. Even if we have to uh, rent a big charter cruiser to be in front of you." even if we have to spend extra days here and it ended up taking us six weeks um 
we'll do whatever we need to do. So when she says that she was just kind of supportive, that's putting it mildly. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. it's both ways, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you've been supportive yeah. of me. Yeah. yeah, that's incredible, guys. I know both of you have your own ventures and your own things that you do, but you also, you have a, a few different things that you do together and some coming up um, events as well. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, that was originally what started this whole thing is we wanted to do stuff together. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then we, you know, we started working on that and then we ended up branching out on our own somewhat and we're trying to bring it back together. So we're right. working together too. So there's so much that we want to do together, especially yeah. I think long term, we would like to do retreats, mm -hmm. teaching people how to follow their dreams, especially people, anybody, of course, mm -hmm. but especially those folks that have been kind of kicked in the teeth by life or are mid age and feeling like they need to wind down rather than wind up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, I laugh about it all the time. And my parents were just laughing about it when they went out to dinner with me the other night while Bobby was at Fitposium. They're like, how you ever met a woman who is gearing up to build a business and on fire at 60 uh, when almost everybody just wants to settle down and play with their grandkids? is beyond us you know it's it's just pretty miraculous so. well if i had grandkids I <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. which i can't wait <laughs> yeah so we're really wanting to do retreats and, yeah. and kind of uh more outdoor type of events mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's really exciting. I'm yeah. definitely looking forward to hearing more about what you guys have in the works when it comes out. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. And he's got, I'll do the physical and he does the mental. Yeah. So kind of play off each other that way. Yeah, you guys, too perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. So um, just for everybody listening, where can they find you? Um, you I know both of you have books, you have your, your um website where you have a lot of information about mind and body um and then you have the instagram and the facebook as well so i'll definitely post those but uh what are they called uh mine's modern bodies fitness and then on facebook modern bodies tribe i have an awesome tribe of women that's really grown over the last six months and they're all super supportive and i just love the vibe that's being attracted to that group um, and they're um, just really, you know, encouraging to other women to at this, you know, kind of stage of life trying to get in shape or just get ahead and have an awesome, wicked sense of humor, too, which I love. <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun. And I run challenges through that group, too, and on Instagram. Um, Wonderful. And then yeah. mine's called Swimming in Miracles. Um, that's my website and my Facebook and my uh, Instagram. All of them is Swimming in Miracles. Yeah. Okay, and we can find your, your books and all of your information that you have out there to help people as well? Well, uh, no. Um, the book that I wrote that I was telling you about, I, it was published in 2007, and most of it's still good, but so much has changed just in the last 10 years with uh, the dating patterns, especially at college, and then social media. I mean, I reference... Uh, Oh, what was it? Not uh, MySpace in my first book. I mean, <laughs> who even remembers what MySpace is? I do. But, uh, <laughs> I've got a book that's slated to release sometime next spring on my first swim and then on the difference between goal setting and what I call soul setting. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Sarah. It was great to get to share our stories. Yeah. Yes. I enjoyed it so much. I feel so uplifted and I feel like oh, yeah. not only me, but plenty of people will have so much insight and, and new things that they can do to hopefully just live their life fully and go after their dreams. So I love you guys and thank you so much for sharing. Oh, thank love you. you too. <laughs> much. And, Please. Well, I'll see you this afternoon, I guess, on the call. <laughs> Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, I just saw this reminder, so I was like, oh, uh -oh. shoot. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I hear my little one. Okay, thank yeah. you. Okay, bye -bye. Sarah. Bye-bye.